The teleport node is a new node that has been created in Mari. Essentially, it replaces connections by sending and transmitting without the need for a noodle input between two nodes. It makes working much faster and clearer by tidying up messy node connections, making it easy to read for you and other artists if they pick up your work. You can also quickly reuse elements such as textures and masks in other areas of the node graph without creating long or overlapping connections. It works inside and outside of nested groups, materials or custom procedural nodes and can even be exported within them whilst remembering which broadcasts it's looking for, making data transmission in and out of groups easier. You can jump quickly between broadcast and receiver to easily navigate the node without needing to manually find your nodes. You also have the ability to quickly view parameters of the nodes you are broadcasting for ease of access and speeding up the artist's efficiency. Here's a brief overview on how to create a teleport node. If you press tab on your keyboard and then type teleport, you'll be presented with two options, teleport broadcast and teleport receiver. The teleport broadcaster will transmit all the data with no restrictions from the nodes it's connected to. The teleport receiver will receive that transmission so that it can pass the data to the other nodes. We will first start by creating a teleport broadcaster, attach it to the nodes which you want to broadcast the data from. Then if you go to the node properties of a teleport broadcaster, you can add an alias or a channel name for it to go by in the channel section. In this case, I'm calling it grunge mask. In this example, we're sending a mask for the grunge texture to a broadcast node. Once that's done, create a teleport receiver, connect it to the nodes which you want to replace the noodles with. Then, in the node properties, go to the channel section, click on the arrow icon and scroll through the list of broadcaster aliases or channel names to choose the one you created previously. Here, I'm going to choose Grunge Mask. In the teleport broadcaster's node properties, there's a button called Focus Receiver. It will show you a list of receivers that the broadcaster is transmitting to. Once the receiver is selected, you will jump to a receiver node. In the receiver nodes, you have the same button, but for the broadcaster. This enables you to navigate and find your teleport nodes faster. Here I have a scene with an elf. In this scene, I'm going to show you how you can use the teleport node to tidy up messy connections and also reuse existing elements quickly and easily. The scene is composed of a handful of material nodes. We have crown tarnishing, cloak cloth, skin, leather, antlers and many more. Each material takes care of a different area on the elf asset. For this example, we're going to enter the base cloth material. To enter material, press Ctrl Enter on your keyboard or Ctrl double click. Embroidered mask and weave are two elements that are being used in multiple areas in the scene. Let's take a look at the weave element. You can display it in the viewer by pressing any number on the keyboard. Having so many noodle connections can be an issue when you have a larger, messier node tree. Ideally, we would need to tidy up these connections in order to make the scene appear less cluttered so that someone who takes over the project can easily understand it. To do this, we would create a teleport node. Following the steps covered earlier in the brief overview, let's create a teleport broadcaster node by pressing tab on your keyboard and typing it in. As we want to broadcast the data from the weave element, let's connect it to it. If we look at the icon on the node, we can see it looks like a radio tower from which we will be broadcasting. If you go into the node properties menu by double clicking on the node, you can see there's a knob called channel. It's good to think of the channel as a radio frequency and which radio channel do I want this node to be broadcasting on? And for the receiver, the channel is the radio frequency it's listening to. In here, you can give the channel a name. Ideally, we would like to find a name which relates to the element we are broadcasting so that we can find it later easily. Which is why I'm going to call mine Weave Texture. Once that's done, we need to look at the different areas that the noodles are connected to. These are the ones we're going to get rid of. Let's have a look at the first one, Weave Merge. If we select the merge connected to it and press 1, we can see what the texture looks like before the Weave Texture is added. Let's now view Weave Merge. We can see that the weave texture is adding a cloth material 
onto the base colour. This is what the weave element is being used for. We now want to tidy up the node graph by removing the noodle. In order to do this, we can replace them with the teleport receiver. Press tab on your keyboard, type receiver to create it. Connect it to the node's input to replace it. Let's open up the teleport receiver's node properties menu by double clicking it. We are now going to select the broadcaster we created earlier in the list which appears when we click on the arrow next to the channel box. Select the weave broadcaster. If we then view it by pressing 2, we can see we have successfully transmitted the weave texture. If you now look at the broadcaster and receivers icon, you can see how the icon changes when a receiver is listening to a broadcaster. Another thing I recommend to do is to rename receivers so that you can find them again later. We can now explore the different buttons and options inside the nodes. If you double click on the first node we created, the Teleport Broadcaster, you can see that there are two buttons. Focus Receiver will show you a list of receivers that the broadcaster is transmitting to. There can be many, which is why it's important to rename the receiver so you know exactly which receiver it is that you need. In this case, the broadcaster is only connected to one receiver, so we can only see one. Another thing to add is that the teleport node works within nested groups, materials or custom procedural nodes, so receivers will still receive broadcasts from within them if the broadcast is outside and vice versa. Once the receiver is selected, you will jump to the receiver node. This is extremely useful when you have a large scene and you want to get somewhere in the node graph quite fast, especially if you don't know where the receiver is. In the receiver node, you have the same button, but for the broadcaster. There is also another button which is Show Broadcasted Node Properties. If you click on it, you can modify the element which is attached to the broadcaster. The node which is directly connected to the broadcaster will be the one that comes up. It enables you to do modifications from afar without having to go back to a broadcaster, allowing you to be more efficient. This is especially useful when your receiver or your broadcaster is within a group. Let's demonstrate this by creating a group for the diffuse. Press Ctrl G to create a group, then press Ctrl Enter or Ctrl Double Click to enter. You can also navigate inside and outside of groups, materials or custom procedural nodes by selecting a tab here. If we now go to the receiver, we can see that we are still receiving the broadcasted image and if we go to Show Broadcasted Node Properties, we can modify the node connected to the broadcaster, which is outside of the group. Here I am changing the size of the UV repeat to make the tileable texture smaller. Another thing about the teleport node is once you've created a few, it's really easy to reuse elements all over your scene. It's a bit like having an element library. Let's say we wanted to add something to a weave merge. Well, we can just create a merge, connect it after the weave merge node, type teleport receiver and plug it in the over input. Once done, scroll through the different elements we have and choose what would fit best. In the drop down, there are a few examples of broadcasted textures. We have leather texture, bobbles texture, grunge mask, purlin, weave texture, grunge, and splash dirt. This would be done in two seconds instead of trying to find the elements manually in the node graph. Lastly, you can change the color of both nodes by selecting Edit, Preferences, Node Graph. And in the node category colors, choosing the color you want them to be displayed in. In this case, I'm going to change my receiver nodes to purple to easily differentiate them from the broadcaster nodes.